Today we are going to introduce and prove a fundamental equation of probability theory in a form which I think is both more relevant and insightful than its usual form. So the theorem we're going to prove is Bayes' rule, which is the equation right here. It's the computation of the probability of the theory T given some collected data D. Now we are going to discuss more in detail this equation and try to dissect it and understand it in depth in a future video, but for today I just want to give a proof of this theorem. To do so, we're going to first need to, to define what a conditional probability is. And before getting there, let's have a Venn diagram with two events A and B. So here the blue part is event A, the red part is event B, and the part at the intersection in orange is the event A and B. Now, when we condition on A being true, it means that we restrict ourselves only to the set A. The probability of B given A is then the proportion of this set that still corresponds to B relatively to the whole size of A. So here it'd be the orange part divided by the blue part. Thus the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. And note that this definition of conditional probabilities is not specific to the letters A and B. In particular, it remains true if we switch the letters A and B. Thus, we also have probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. But now we see that this implies that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B. In other words, if you want to have A and B, then you first need to have B, and then given B, you need to obtain A. Now, if we replace probability of A and B in the expression of the definition of probability of B given A, we obtain the classical form of Bayes' rule, namely probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B divided by the probability of A. But that's not what we had. For one thing, we need to replace A and B by the letters D and T. Well, that's easy. It yields probability of T given D is equal to the probability of D given T times the probability of T divided by the probability of D. But this is not all. We now need to detail how to compute probability of D. Yes, because intuitively there's no absolute probability of data D, or at least it is more naturally obtained as the combination of the predictions of different theories T. In particular, we can use a lemma called the law of total probabilities, which says that the probability of D is equal to the weighted sum of the different ways to compute it through different theories T prime. That is, the probability of D is equal to the sum over T prime of the probabilities of D given T prime times the probability of T prime. And in particular, since T is one such theory, this can be rewritten as the probability of D equals to the probability of D given T times the probability of T plus the sum over A difference from T of the probability of D given A times the probability of A, where the A's can now be interpreted as the alternatives to theory T. Now, to prove this lemma, we are going to start with an even more basic remark, namely that if A and B are two disjoint sets, that is, A and B cannot occur simultaneously, then the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now, note that I've said R for the symbol union, but uh, in a sense they can be interpreted equivalently. Now you may want to ask why this is true. Well, this is a fundamental axiom of probability theory. So it's very commonly accepted in probability theory. It's one of the basic axioms. Now, given that theories are disjoint, we can write D as the disjoint union of the sets D intersection with T prime. And thus we have the probability of D. We know that this is equal to the sum over T primes of the probability of D and T prime. And finally, we can conclude using the definition of conditional probabilities, which says that the probability of D given T prime is equal to the probability of D and T prime divided by the probability of T prime. And by multiplying by probability of T prime on both sides, putting this in our previous equation yields the lemma. 
and thus the lemma holds. And finally, the lemma then straightforwardly implies Bayes' theorem. So there you have it, Bayes' theorem in its most beautiful form, I would argue.